What's up guys, Evan here Folk Creek Outdoors. And today, as you can see, as we clicked on the video, we done upgraded in the world, boys. Right here, got the brand new Matthews V3. I love this thing right here, guys. It is an awesome bow. I had the bear legit, like Hayden, and uh, I was blessed enough for my 16th birthday to get this bow. Uh, I have it set on 65 pounds with a Trophy Ridge uh, sight, a Trinity drop away rest, Matthews quiver. And uh, one really cool thing about this bow is the Bible verse right there. And I really do like that. Me and Hayden are such big on Christianity and everything. I love that Matthews has enough, you know, has enough courtesy to do that and show that, you know, they care about God putting God in their company. And that was one thing, another thing that pulled me close to wanting to shoot a Matthew. Sorry about the noise up on the farm. Uh, the farmer lets his son's actually cutting hay right now. Hayden's buying the camera and come on in. But yeah, guys, this this is what I'm gonna be using right here. This is my, uh, it's gonna be the 2023 fall bow setup. Hayden, come show y'all his real quick. I'm gonna grab my arrows. Um. So if y'all been a follower of the channel for a long time, you know that we posted a Q&A video last year with our bow setups. And I have basically really the same setup. I really just changed the sight to a True Glow. Um, I believe this is called a Max Distance True Glow. And that's really about it for me. Um, another difference is last year I was shooting Mambas uh, with 27 inch. Now I'm shooting 29 and a half Nuge arrows. See right there. So. But closer to season, we'll give y'all our actual like hunting setup. This is kind of just yeah. our bare base. But real quick, we're kind of going to go over. Uh, this is more of a my new bow setup video. I'll shoot one shot just so y'all can see. The, just so y'all can see me shoot. Now, hold on a second, you bunch of haters out there. Don't be judging my bow shooting for them, okay? I'm not uh, Chris B. Okay, guys, so just going to shoot one. There it is, guys. Hold on, we're gonna take y'all down there. So all y'all haters that hate on my form, look at this. You know, y'all hate on my form, say I can't shoot. Dang it! I dropped the camera, guys, I'm sorry. But look at that. Boom! Hayden, how do you feel about that shot? How do you feel about that shot? <laughs> how do you feel about that, huh? Make a comeback right now, come on. If this shot isn't better than mine, um... I got, I got a new form from last year, too. You gotta get there. Oh! I'm still doing it with the new form. All right, guys. We're gonna cut, and we'll pick y'all back up after we go get the arrows. Bye-bye. beautiful montage right there of his new v3 but today we're going to be keeping it simple i know the last time we done a q a was like 40 minutes long and it was just like random questions like how do you shoot out of a tree stand just crazy questions so today we're gonna keep it simple and quick um we're going to be going off of questions that we have asked before and we've kind of thought about before so the first question and a lot of new hunters uh think about this too that doesn't have a lot of experience is how do you make your shoots or you're practicing more realistic um one thing that I found to be really helpful is if you have a tree stand or a blind or whatever you hunt out of, some people make like makeshift like Rambo blinds, but you can do that if you want. Um, whatever, whatever you hunt out of. Um, like for instance, I hunt, we, 95% of the time me and Evan hunt out of a tree stand. So what I would do and what I get, I'm about to do right now, cause it's about the first week of July. So it's, get, it's getting there uh, slowly but surely. But um, if you have access to a tree stand, one thing that I, it really helps you when you're practicing is to kind of get in the groove of shooting out of a tree stand. So if you know, if you have trees around where you shoot or whatever, mount a stand, shoot out of it, you know, shoot every day, 20, 30 yards, whatever. It really does help when you, because when you're in the stand, it's a lot, it's a whole lot different than shooting on a flat ground, you know, to 20 yard target. So um, anything that can really prepare you for the woods is the best. So 
we'll go ahead and take a shot. Alrighty guys, so the next question that I've asked a lot, a lot of people go to ask, how do you practice? So the way I like to practice, I, so I work every day, five days a week. So that means I'm like most people, I don't have enough time to go and shoot 50, 60 arrows a day, not, you know, and that's okay. And I heard uh, T-Bone credits to him. If you only have enough time, if you have five minutes in between work, uh, five minutes, if you got a kid and you've got five minutes, that's what you got, go outside and shoot three arrows and pick distances that you know you may struggle at or distances that you feel comfortable at shooting in the woods. And take those and put your heart and soul into those three arrows. Because here's the realistic fact, guys. When that moment of truth happens in the woods and that big buck or bear, or whatever you're chasing, when it comes into range you're not going to have a lot of time to well you're getting one shot that's the bottom line you're getting one shot at that animal and you got to make it count it's i mean unless the good lord blesses you he ain't going to get more than one shot so when you come out here if you only if you can only shoot one arrow put your heart and soul into that arrow and i like to as the season gets closer i love lower the amount of shots you take maybe come outside and shoot one arrow a day one arrow a day and shoot it maybe at 30 or 40 yards shoot it at a distance that you might not shoot in the woods but when you're shooting at 30 and 40 yards those 20 and 15 yard shots will seem like a breeze and that right there is your second tip All right, guys, so the third tip that we're gonna have today is a lot of people struggle, which I, me and Evan do this all the time, and I still do it to this day. I've got better with it, but you know, it's just a part of a bow shooting. Um, it's pulling, so um, that first shot that I am a tip, I pulled, um, it was because of the wrist sling. But a lot of the things that people do when they pull, a lot of people kind of just pull back and don't think through, and they just, they kind of get anxious and just pull right before the shot. But one thing that I found that really helps you in the moment of truth, practicing whatever you're doing, if you're shooting at a competition, whatever, um, I like to honestly, I'll get a close up for here, y'all, real quick. I bend my wrist, so when I pull back, my, I can't move my wrist. Only thing, the only way I can move my wrist is if I would put it back at an angle. So that's one thing that's really helped me with um, not pulling. Um, it's I've really I've done really be better about it with doing this tip. So. Go ahead and give y'all a demonstration. You see my wrist is straight, bent. Alrighty guys, so the next thing Hayden, me and was talking about the best way, and a lot of people ask that's new to bow hunting, maybe you're just getting started and you're trying to learn how to practice or the best way to practice. What I like to do now, like I said, I'm going to say this a bunch of you. I'm not no expertise bow hunter or shooter. But I have been around a lot of good people to teach me. And I'm going to pass that knowledge on to y'all. What I like to do is starting. Now, shooting your bow year-round as much as you can. I 100% encourage it. Shoot every day if you have the opportunity. But I like to, going back to my last question, right now during the month of july i want to shoot as much as i can if i can shoot 60 arrows i'm going to shoot 60 arrows because the more you can repetitiously shoot your bow into a target and you can learn because i don't care how many youtube videos you watch how i don't care if you go to a bow doctor repetitionally shooting your bow every day is going to make you a better shot because if you if you're out here shooting and you just see every time that you're grouping the one side then you can say, okay, I need to tune my bow. I need to not grip as tight. And it's stuff like that that you tune now so when you get in the tree stand in September and that moment of truth comes, you know when you're sitting in the stand and you can just talk it through your mind. Okay, I gotta, I gotta make sure not to pull, make sure not to pull, make sure not, not to pull. And I also like to, this time of year when I'm practicing, I love to see how long I can hold my bow because there's going to be times when you're in the deer woods that I promise y'all, Hayden can tell you prime examples. I mean, he's behind the camera and he can come out and tell you 
how many times that we've had it happen, there's going to be times that you're in the stand and that deer is going to stand behind a tree for it seems like an eternity. And you need to know that if you need to hold your bow back for two minutes, you can do it. So that also might mean you have to lower the poundage. But my biggest tip for practicing in the summer is persistence. Practice as much as you can, number one. Number two, learn about your bow. Every bow is different. My bow, my Matthews is different than Hayden's bear. How somebody has a Hoyt, every bow is different. So learn, learn about your bow, learn what arrows you should shoot. Prime example, when I first got this bow, I was shooting 300s. Bow was shooting off like crazy. Started shooting 400s, bow started shooting a little bit better. But do those tune-ups now and not in the stand. And number three, when you're out practicing, try to put yourself, just like Hayden said, he made a great tip. Try to put yourself in the most realistic hunting situations you can because the more situations you get out here in your yard or wherever you may have to shoot, if you can go and you're shooting out of it, let's say for tree stand, you're shooting out of a tree stand, and you just do that every single day and you repetitively do that and you know and you've shot that morel target or whatever type of target you have, you shot that a thousand times out of that stand, you're gonna feel a whole lot more comfortable when that moment of truth comes or if you're practicing on holding your bow back. If you can hold your bow back in your yard for three minutes and you don't even have to have a target, you can do that uh, outside of your house in a safe direction. Don't launch an arrow through your mother's car. Um, but, you know, you can do that anywhere as you want. You know, you can just walk outside and you say, okay, my goal is by deer season, I want to be able to hold my bow back for two and a half minutes. And you can get to that point. But that's my top three tips to for practicing leading up to deer season. Alright guys, for the last tip of the day, um, it's going to be something that a lot of, this is mainly targeted to a lot of younger bow hunters, and it's really, um, it's how much poundage you should have. Um, and this is really one thing that I struggled with for a long time, um, having too much poundage, um, and it really does affect you in the woods. You know, out here practicing, it really doesn't, it doesn't seem that much, but when you're in the woods on a cold November day, and you're locked up, you can't hardly pull it back, that's when it really matters. So. Um, don't be peer pressured by people to get higher poundage. I promise you, 30 pounds up. Great example, Shemaine Nugent. Um, she shoots 30. She shoots a 30 pound bow, Matthew's bow, and she kills everything. She, I mean, she kills zebras with that on Ted Nugent's farm. So, um, no, but really, um, I shoot about 60 pounds, so around that area, and I can comfortably pull that back. I can comfortably hold it for two or three minutes. Um, so. I think you should really look for a, a certain poundage that you can really hold back and just say, you know, I'm comfortable with this because if you're like, you know, if you're holding it back, you know, an example, if you're holding it back and you can barely hold it back and you're shaking and stuff, it's too much. And, you know, a lot of people like pass-throughs and a pass-through is the best you can get, but I mean, anything that will make you more comfortable in the stand and will help you get your shot on your target buck, target bear, whatever you're hunting, will, it's the best option for you. So. Um, like I said, I shoot 60. That's just the best for me. That may, that may not be the best for somebody else. Somebody else might want, might want 70. Somebody else might want 40. Just whatever that makes you comfortable in the woods, and that's what really matters the most. And also, another thing before I shoot this, select the poundage that you can pull back straight because you don't want to be pulling it back like that in the woods because <laughs> you know, you're going to get spotted. So, um... Like I said, select the poundage, you can just straightly pull back, and you can hold for a long time. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching the video. This is the new outro. So, we hope you enjoyed. And, number one, if any of you come at our bow shooting form, we will come and find you, and we will ban you off our YouTube channel. It is your sworn duty to watch all of our videos and I know this is our first video in a month and y'all are probably like in the comments oh my god Evan y'all haven't posted a video in literally a month we've been busy we have things to do people thank y'all for watching our video and 
no, y'all are probably going to be like, oh my god, Evan is a Matthews fanboy. And don't listen to uh, Hayden's opinion. I have been a diehard Matthews fan my whole life. Not true. We're going to have to take this out in the parking lot. After. Uh, but, uh, back to the outro. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. And I, like I said, we really are sorry that we haven't been able to get a lot of uh, content out to y'all lately. We've been really busy. Me and Hayden's both been working, you know, on the grind, grinding all of our life. Um, you know, got to get ready for the preseason, pre, you know, doing the preseason deer hunting grind. You already know. So we are about two months out here in West Virginia. We're getting closer, guys. I know y'all are like so hyped to see the video of like, go out and shoot them deer. Boy, I, I killed 15 over my corn pile last fall, but we don't care. But really, now on to the outro. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share all this video with all your friends. And if you do not subscribe, I will. I will take, I will take care of you. And, but really, make sure to keep God number one, hunting number two, and go follow us on Instagram because we are all at a thousand followers, guys. So let's make it up to 100K. And then we're going to go surpass Mr. Beast, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. And I'll catch you next time on Oak Creek Outdoors. I'm Evan. I'm Hayden. Sign it out!